Hey witches, so it's day 78 and I said I would do 10 today and I'm on my goal. I just have to get all of these uploaded. Um, anyway, so day 78 and Balak is the second of the greater Sabbaths in the witches wheel of the year. And Balak um, is an Irish Gaelic word which is pronounced im Malk. Other variations of this festival's name include the Gaelic Mbolg and the English Candle Mass. Mbolg uh, celebrates the official end of the dead time, the period from October 31st to February 2nd, during which witches perform very little magic and no initi initiatory rites. This dead time uh, coincided with the death of the sun the light of the day, and subsequently all perennial plant life. Pagan folk uh, could see that daylight hours were visibly longer in Umbalk, and country folk and witches alike celebrated this turn of events as one of awakening for the Earth's energies. Along with this extended daylight time, the promise of spring, and the renewal of life, Umbalk is a celebration of the first stirrings of the earth. In northern and western Europe, the ground is often still frozen or snow covered in early February. The return of light, the lengthening days, uh, signaled promise of the long growing season of the still distant summer. As ancient Celts favored Breed, the triple goddess of wells and springs, as the patroness of Amalk, devotees of Breed. Uh, believed that she could bring fertility, and they lit candles in her honor to mark the growth of light and the coming change of season. So popular was Breed's uh, worship that she still she is still the patron deity of contemporary Druid circles. Ancient celebrants made Saint Breed's crosses from new rushes and hung them near the pens of farm animals to assure their growth and fertility. After the celebrants wove their crosses, they would carefully bury whatever rushes remained. Ancient celebrants might also make dollies from oat sheaves or corn husks. One old custom consisted of dressing the oat or corn, corn dolly in woman's attire and then placing it in a breed's bed, usually a simple basket, along with a phallic symbol. Pagan folk believed that the custom assured a fruitful and prosperous year. At the time of Imalk, which literally means in milk, the ancient pagan folk noticed that female herd animals usually gave birth and sucked their, uh, suckled their young. This lactation period signaled the rebirth of the earth energies and the promise of spring and summer. The suckling of young birth and uh, fusindili of the animals or animal world gave rise to several pagan customs. One practice involved pouring the first pail of cow's milk on the ground to assure a prosperous spring. It would all. It was also a day set aside for blessings of plows and other agricultural tools. In one custom, farmers would wash their spades and other tools in fresh cow's milk again to assure bounty. In areas where the weather permitted, the plow might be dragged from one home to another. Yet another account tells of farmers pouring whiskey over their plows to assure blessings and bountiful harvest. The English language borrowed and shortened the word whiskey from the Irish Gaelic word uskebau or uske bitha and the and Scottish Gaelic oak. Uh, this compound descends from Old Irish. Um, water and of life, meaning literally water of life. Ancient pagan folks poured whiskey over their plows in order to give life to the land. I am terrible, uh, terrible at pronunciations. I'm terribly sorry, so I didn't even try that because I butchered it the first time. And the celebrants also made small food offerings to the fairy folk, who they believed blessed the fields with their magic and assured a good crop. Farmers might make the offerings to fairies by placing cheese or bread on a plow and then leaving it unattended in the fields. Although customs varied from one uh, region to another, the celebration was important for the ancient agrar 
agrarian societies since it symbolically prepared the way for the Earth's uh, fusinity. Practice fairy offering. What you'll need, a piece of blank paper, about 4 by 4 inch square, a pen with red ink or a quill pen with dragon's blood ink, a small piece of cheese, bread, or fruit. To begin, use your red ink pen to write a wish you might have on a blank piece of paper. The lore of fairies indicates that they grant wishes for healing, fertility, or general blessing. Go outdoors at dusk and place the paper with your wish written upon it on the ground near a fern or a flowering plant, both of which are favorite places for fairies. If there are no flowering plants or ferns nearby, place the paper in some place hidden, such as a shallow a uh, shadow where it will go unnoticed by humans. Place your food offering on top of the paper, then turn and walk away, making sure not to look back at the site. Return to the offering site a few days to reclaim the wish paper. Once you have it, burn it and scatter the ashes near your front door. If the paper is missing, you know the fairies have taken it. Word has it that the fairies work cheaply, so know that the fairies have noted your wish and they will grant it in return for your food offering. A word to the wise. The English word fairy traces its roots to the old French fae, and from vulgar Latin feta, meaning the goddess of fate. Anyway, that was day 78, and next will be 79. Um, and then I'll post this 10 that I've done on uh, YouTube, and uh, be on with the next day. Um, anyway, so day 79 is next. Bless the beat and keep crafting, witches.